Hey there, bookworms! This is Jen, and thanks for tuning in for another episode of Read It and Steep. Today, we are going to be talking about Braving the Wilderness by Brene Brown, one of my new favorite books that just came out this past September. So here's a quick glimpse of what I'm going to be talking about in this book reviews video. We're going to talk about the power of vulnerability and why it's necessary to have fulfilling relationships. We're going to talk about what it means to be brave and have the courage to know when it's necessary to stand alone. And we're also going to talk about how we can feel true, genuine belonging and never again feel like we don't fit in. Brown is a sensational teacher at the University of Houston. She's known for some of her more powerful TED Talks, including one called The Power of Vulnerability, which is where I first heard about her and learned of her research. So the first chapter, Everywhere and Nowhere, opens up with a story that Brene shares about her childhood, where she tried out for the drill team, which was something that she was really passionate about. She put a lot of time into her audition and her parents dropped her off and she eagerly ran up to the board to see if she made the cut for the team and she stared at the piece of paper and didn't see her name on it and she didn't make it. And she was broken to pieces by this. But she didn't have the ability at that young age to know what to say to her parents because she felt such great shame about not fitting in and not getting onto this team. And she shares with us that she feels like her parents were ill-equipped to deal with handling that kind of conversation with their child at that young of an age. So instead of talking about it, both parties just avoided it. And Brene just felt like she didn't fit in. She didn't fit in on the team. She felt like her whole life, she didn't really fit in anywhere else. And through her research, Brene has began to uncover that there is a difference between fitting in and true belonging. Brown is obsessed with poet and civil activist Maya Angelou, who she met before she actually passed away. And she had been a huge role model to Brene in understanding what it means to truly belong somewhere. Angelo had asserted in one of her poems, You are only free when you realize you belong no place. You belong every place, no place at all. The price is high, the reward is great. At first you hear that poem and you're like, damn, that's some deep shit. I don't know exactly what she means by that, but she sounds like she knows what's up. What she means by that is you truly belong anywhere when you show up authentically as yourself and confront things in a genuine, compassionate way. In that way, sometimes you'll be in situations where you just really need to voice your own opinion, but it's at the risk of being ostracized from the group that you're in and not feeling like you fit in with them. Here, you belong no place because you speaking out has put you in a position where the group no longer accepts you. But it's important to know that you're also any place because no matter where you are or who you're with, you feel comfortable because you know that you have your own values supporting you. And when that happens, you truly belong no place at all. And that might sound like a scary thing, but it's not. There's actually a beauty and a power in that. And let's remember here that her book, uh, the subtitle is The Quest for True Belonging and the Courage to Stand Alone. And the quest for true belonging is what we're really talking about here. True belonging happens when we present ourselves authentically and imperfectly to the world and we find more value in our own self-acceptance than desperately trying to belong or fit in with some other group. Let me share um, a personal kind of story with you. Easter had just passed and my aunt had sent me a text message right beforehand asking me if I would come over and spend Saturday night with the family and come with them to church the next morning and do Easter lunch together. And she said to me, you know, the family never gets together anymore. You girls are all grown up. I would love to see everyone. It, it would be great for this holiday to bring us all together. However, my aunt knows that I'm not religious. Um, in a way, I have my own set of kind of spiritual beliefs, but I don't identify specifically under any religion. And this was her effort to kind of say like, come to church and be with us and believe in God. And in a situation like this, it's easier sometimes I feel like for somebody to bite the bullet and do something to please somebody else at their own expense. So some people even if they're not religious would say, oh, you know, I'm just gonna go to church, or the family's gonna nag me, and they almost feel like guilted into going. But sometimes, 
being brave and having self-awareness means confronting difficult situations and making them into something that doesn't have to be difficult. So for me, I you know sent my aunt back a message and said, thank you so much for the invite. I'm super excited to see the family. I would love to come Easter. I'll probably just sleep in on Sunday and maybe do some reading. Please, I hope you don't get upset by that, but you know I'm not really religious and I'd rather take that time to do something that I want to invest in. And I'll still stay for lunch and it'll be great. Like we'll have a wonderful weekend. And I think that it was too hard for her at first. She didn't know exactly what to say and not in a way that I felt like she would have been bitter or upset about it in that people aren't used to you giving them an honest reaction like that. Because so many people will just, well, they'll, they'll save face. They won't want to start an argument or they, they fear confronting things. So they would go there and kind of very unauthentically present themselves, go in a situation where they don't feel like they belong just for a fake sense of fitting in and belonging with a group or to please somebody else. That's because we innately want to be part of something. As human beings, we want to feel like we belong and that we experience connections with people. But oftentimes, a big reason that people connect is on shared feelings of fear or disdain. I beg to ask the question, is it a real connection if you're just doing it to save face? True belonging is standing behind your morals and feeling enough worth to be okay. Whether or not these people give me their approval or not, because at the end of the day, I have my own approval and I know what's right in my heart and that's what matters most to me. And that takes courage to, to stand out from the crowd and willingly risk rejection in that way. I could have risked my aunt being bitter or mad and have soured the whole holiday because she was upset with me. But you know what? I was kind and I was respectful of her opinion and I was respectful of my own. I was loving, but most importantly, I was all of these things all while still staying true to myself and what I believed in and made a decision that was ultimately best for me. And that's really all you need to feel at peace, you know, belonging and feeling at home within ourselves. And this whole book, its title, it's around braving the wilderness. And you know, what comes to mind when you think of a wilderness? You think solitude, you think being amongst the trees and the whisper of the wind, and you think vulnerability, you know, what's lurking behind the bush that could jump out and threaten me. You think of feeling lost, uh, surrounded by unfamiliar territory. And sometimes standing up for our values is like that. It's like choosing to venture through the brush alone, away from the group on a different trail. And in that sense, we choose to be authentic and we become the wilderness in its own way because we embrace it by being alone and choosing to be more curious rather than defensive and living from, as Brene says, our wild heart rather than our weary hurt. So I wasn't gonna go to church and pretend I believe and pretended everything was okay and ignore things and present myself in this unauthentic kind of way because that's not loyalty to the group. And that's not love for myself, that's operating based strictly upon fear and a sense of wanting to fit in. Standing alone means taking the risk of not fitting in and not selling yourself out because it feels safer and it seems like maybe the easier option. It's learning to trust ourselves and how we feel and in turn, projecting that to other people in a way that they feel like they can trust us for being our most genuine, honest selves as well. Because that's what trust is, it's a give and take. How can I expect somebody to truly trust me if I'm not being honest with them and vice versa? So to me, at the top of it all, the pivotal most important thing is to be honest. So having talks like this is super important rather than just avoiding something like this because it brings people together without making assumptions. So this involves creating an atmosphere where people feel safe. They feel safe to share how they feel, where their belonging wouldn't be threatened by being honest. People need to feel like they're being supported for what they say. And that's the only time that they will really openly share 
is when they feel that their beliefs and feelings will be respected. So I'd like to wrap up this video with this thought. The very foundation of courage is vulnerability. We have to show up and we have to be ourselves. Now you can do this in a kind and respectful and sincere way and show gratitude and empathy towards the other person, but you can still do this by being true to your heart. If you don't open yourself up to feel or to connect with others, you'll be experiencing a different kind of alone feeling. A scared kind of alone that hides amongst the trees instead of blazing the trail. And remember, no vulnerability, no courage. In this book, she quotes a Rashi Joan Halifax who says, to feel true compassion, we need to be truly transparent. Seeing the world clearly and letting the world see clearly into us. And this is where Brown had first heard of the term from Halifax, strong back, soft front. And she applied this to her own kind of um, methodology for how she thinks about true belonging and that she put together the strong back, soft front, but she adds her own little twist to it wild heart at the end. So strong back is staying true to your beliefs, having a firm backbone and a foundation for your values. The soft front is being approachable and accepting, um, kind to strangers and to everyone and creating that air of trust. But she adds a third line to her own mantra, which is wild heart. And she calls this our greatest spiritual connection. It's our ability to brave the wilderness with our own wild fire to blaze the trail and light the way. But she says we can do this by being both fierce and kind. And I love that line. Oftentimes belonging to ourselves means standing alone. Braving a wilderness of uncertainty. But as Maya Angelou said, the price is high, the reward is great. Well, that's it. If you found this video at all to be helpful or speak to your soul, please leave a comment and a like. Tell me about your experience with Brene Brown's research yourself. And this is a new channel for me, so I would love if you subscribed. I'm gonna try to release a new video every month, so just stay tuned. All right, till next time, stay vulnerable, bookworms.